Anyway, the next story is from Abu, A-B-U, a Nigerian. He was out of money, very depressed. He wanted the money he needed to pay for the education of his children and for their textbooks. He'd been, he'd retired a year ago and he'd been waiting, waiting and waiting for checks, for money that was supposed to be in the form of a gratuity. In Africa, they have something called a gratuity and his pension. It had been a year, no money. And he was at the end of his wits. So at bedtime that night, he reviewed one of the act discourses he had read before. He had it all marked and lined and everything. So he looked at the underlinings and then he went to bed singing Hugh silently. And then he awoke in the dream state. But these money worries were so heavy upon him that he carried them there. And so he's weighed down and heavy and feeling oh so depressed. When a friend comes along, he says, Abu, what's the matter? Abu tells him. And the friend says, oh, come on for a walk. It's a beautiful night. Let's enjoy the breeze. Let's go for a walk. Let's just go down the street here. Abu didn't want to. He didn't feel like it. His heart wasn't in it. Finally, finally, he gave in and they walked down the street. And as they went along, they came to this schoolyard. It was actually a campus and there seemed to be a group of people there. There were several buildings on this campus. It looked like a political rally or something going on, something in one area. But his friend steered him to another building off to the right. When they came up to it, it looked to be a lecture hall. And then a young energetic and alert young man came out and greeted Abu very warmly, took him inside and showed him around and came to a certain hall where someone was giving a talk. And so he showed Abu in Abu seated himself and looked and he recognized the speaker. It was Toward Managi. He was, he had served many lifetimes, many years ago in the ancient kingdom of Abyssinia, which is Ethiopia today. And Tuart Managi was speaking from a big book on a lectern, and occasionally he'd look down at it. And he spoke and spoke, and while he did, you see, this book was the I really love that book, the Shariat Ki Sukhmat. <laughs> and he was reading from it. And by the time Abu awoke, this depression and everything had left. And so he realized that the master had heard him 
had allowed him to go to this place, this holy place, and hear this lecture. But now I must say, in a follow-up, well, while Abu was still there during the talk, he felt this coolness coming down, just washing over him, and with it his troubles went away. But now I was just going to mention as a follow-up, Abu said, well, by the, at the time he had written this letter, he still hadn't gotten, got the money and everything else. And so there are possible outcomes to his situation. And there are basically three. One, the check is in the mail. I think we've all heard that or used that ourselves. And second, he may have to find a new source of income or revenue, something. Or, since he's retired, maybe his kids, at least some of them, will have to fend for themselves. The point is that as long as we're here and we are soul, a spark of God, this creative element, element, this creative powers is within us. It lets us exercise our talents. And seize the opportunities that are there. But sometimes we spend so much time looking at the closed doors that we don't look around to see if there are any open ones. And there are. There are too many people, for instance, today who've come back from the war. They suffered severe injury, injuries and are disabled. And it's interesting, some people are survivors. They're going to make do no matter what. And other people aren't survivors. But soul, in its pure state, is a survivor. There's always a way. There's always a way. But we must exercise our creative talents. But Abu realized, too, that a clear message had come to him that was to help him out for the moment. And maybe in time, but he shouldn't be surprised if he has to do if he has to pull the wagon himself. <clears throat>